We all know what flamingos are: big pink birds wading in the water, feeding on plankton and other small stuff. There are currently six species described, which differ in size, but the feeding technique is the same. And although I use the American flamingo Phenicopterus ruba as an example in this video, the technique remains the same; only the sizes differ. To look at feeding, we need to look at the head of the flamingo. We can see that the curved beak is not totally closed, but has a grid structure at its outer margin. The grid consists of rows of tooth-like structures which run along the whole beak rim. They are called the maxillary lamellae. Let's have a closer look at them using a microscopic picture. We can differentiate between the large marginal lamellae at the outer rim and behind that the smaller submarginal lamellae which are closer together. The green lines indicate the direction of the rows which run as I said before along the beak's edge. Further inward of those rows on the inner surface of the beak run additional rows of inner lamellae in transversal direction forming a kind of comb. Size and shape of the respective type of lamellae varies along the beak. For example, at the straight part of the beak, the marginals are tooth-like inward pointing lamellae with up to 2 mm gap between them. The lamellae towards the tip of the beak are smaller and closer together and of a more pointed shape. In addition to this grid, the flamingos have a very big tongue which fills the complete mouth when the beak is closed. It lies in the trough of the lower beak. At the tip, the tongue is smooth but covered with spines at the base. When the tongue is retracting, these spines scrape along the inner lamellae series of the beak, collecting whatever got caught in the comb-like structure. And the tongue movement is actually the key to the flamingo's feeding technique. Pumping back and forth movement up to 12 times per second of this big tongue causes lateral in and out flow of water, so the water passes through the grid of marginal and submarginal lamellae. This picture shows a part of the beak in feeding position, which means the upper beak is at the bottom and the lower beak at the top. The two halves of the beak are not totally closed but slightly open. We see the outer lamellae and the comb-like inner lamellae. The tongue pumping creates a water inflow carrying potential food items to and through the grid of the outer lamellae. Everything bigger than 10 mm in diameter can't pass, though usually nothing bigger than 6 mm is filtered. This way plankton and small crabs are sucked into the beak while larger objects remain outside. The second phase of the tongue pumping motion causes an outflow of water, but now the beak is closed as far as it can, which reduces the grid size through which the water passes. Thus, items bigger than 0.5 mm are kept back by the comb and grid structure, while everything smaller is washed out. We have seen that the lamellae are not equally distanced, but are closer toward the beak's tip. By directing the water flow with the tongue, the flamingo is able to influence where the water outflow happens and thus if the particles kept back are bigger or smaller. This way they can discriminate for favorite food sizes when they are available. But not only the size of food items is important. Flamingos have taste buds at the back of their mouth and seem to be able to discriminate food for taste too.